my guest had supernatural peace poured into him in Africa. I mean a peace that is so strong, so tangible, you can't worry even if you try. This peace is so powerful, it overcomes every negative circumstance. Now, he's pouring this peace into other people. Next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Can ancient secrets of the supernatural be rediscovered? Do angels exist? Is there life after death? Are healing miracles real? Can you get supernatural help from another dimension? Has the future been written in advance? Sid Roth has spent 30 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. I love the rarefied air of heaven. Now, I have, to my knowledge, I've never said this at the introduction of a show, but I have been looking so forward to interviewing my guest, David Martin, because you see, David received two impartations from God that I believe as a, a mentor of you in the end times, you must, absolutely must receive. Uh, but David, uh, let's start out with in 2005, you received three prophetic words. Tell me about them. I did. Said I was in the midst of a 17-week revival in Connecticut. And as I was driving uh, back one night to the church about midnight, God really spoke very strongly to me. And I hear many things from the Lord, but these were like three imperative words. And he, what he said to me is bad times were coming. And this was four months before Katrina happened. And literally, I saw Katrina of sort. Mm. And if I saw correctly, Katrina was nothing. What really impressed upon me when that happened is God saying to me, this is a wake-up call. So that was word number one. Number two, he said to me, his, his people were not taking his word serious and kind of picking and choosing the parts we like. And of course, we all, all like prosperity and those kind of things. But God said, we need to look at the totality of his word. And the one thing specifically he spoke to me of significance was the sowing and reaping that as we sow, we will reap. God says, I'm not mocked in this. Now, most people hear of sowing and reaping with money, but that means everything. Every thought. I mean, every not, thought. Every thought, not just our deeds, but those thoughts that we think on, those things that we're meditating on. And that's where he really began to teach me about the importance of meditating the Word, because those words that we're thinking, and particularly those that stir up emotion inside of us, were creating, good or bad, but they were creating. Hmm. What was the next word? The third word was that we were so caught up in ourself, the things of this world, things that were important to us personally, and you know, what causes us to be selfish or, or things that are just important to us. It's almost the spirit of this age. Absolutely. That we're living in right now. Yes. So we have to fight the spirit of this age. I believe God is helping us to make right decisions right now. Okay, when are these horrific times going to come on America? Well, I believe we're already seeing them. I mean, other peoples in the world, whether it's Indonesia or Haiti, but the Bible says in the last days, this is, would be the case, you know, wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, famines. But I believe very earnestly, well, God spoke that in 2005, but then in, well, two years ago, God said to me, you have two years to prepare for what's coming, which is where we are right now. What is coming? Well, I think more bad. I mean, it's going to cover every area, Sid. It's going to be uh, economic. It's going to be geophysical. It's going to, well, financial, economic. I think even in the church, in the religious world, we're going to see a lot of shaking. Uh, people losing their ministries, people being caught in sin. The sin's going to find you out. 
And but you know what? It's to the advantage to be found out. How would you like to find out about the sin after you die and you go to the day of judgment? I mean, now is the time to get rid of that sin because of the precious blood of the Messiah, uh, of Yeshua. Uh, David, I am so excited about these two anointings yes. you received. Tell me about the first one and the circumstances. Well, the, the circumstance, it's a really long story, but try, trying to make it short is difficult. But essentially, there was a revival that went through East Central Africa in the 30s. It was called the Shining One Movement. And the people of that movement literally, I heard about this in the 90s when I was in their refugee camps so in, in Rwanda. But the people of that day shined. They literally radiated the glory of God. Listen, last night at dinner, David was shining. Tell me about this. I mean, non-believers, have, have people walked up to you like last night, I saw this, said, you are literally shining? I hear it all the time. I, it's just a common thing that I hear. But what's, to me, what's more important is that all believers, I mean, this is what we're called to do. We're, we're called to radiate the confidence. I've, I've always felt that in the latter times, that when we walk in holiness and there's only room for the glory of God, it's got to be released. And of course, yes. we're going to be shining. These people walked in such holiness, they would repent of little sins that most people here in America wouldn't even think anything exactly. of. Explain that. Well, when I was there in 1998, through a unique series of circumstances, which was very supernatural in itself, in the midst of a pastor's conference, God poured out His Spirit and 250 pastors all got baptized with the Holy Ghost. I mean, we're talking non-charismatic people are getting baptized <laughs> in the Holy Ghost. Three hours of glory, God said to me, go to the birthplace of that revival. And while I was there the next day, walked into the chapel where this revival happened 30 some years earlier, and while I'm in the chapel, a man named Enoch walked in. <laughs> kind of, that's an interesting coincidence, <laughs> Enoch. <laughs> well, Enoch just lived, happened to live a long time. He was one of the founders of that story word. In, in this chapel, this revival started in this chapel, spread all over East Central Africa. But because God had told me in 1979 to study miracles, to prepare for the end, if you will, to teach people how to walk in the miraculous for these days. And the one miracle sin that God really directed me to, to study, was transfiguration. So I've been studying this for 30 years. Now here, I'm face to face with a man that walked in transfigure anointing. And I'm saying, tell me about it. And as he explained it to me, he said, David, this anointing, when this move of God really wasn't about shining. It was about holiness. And the presence of God was so strong that people literally could not live with any kind of sin. And coming to the altar every day, repenting, as you said, of the smallest little thing, bad thought, bad action. But he said, what happened over the course of time is they started shining. Well, uh, not only did David receive the shining light anointing from one of the people that were connected with this move in the 30s, but he received an anointing that I don't believe you'll survive <laughs> in the last days unless you have it. And I've experienced it too. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural! One new man, the convergence of Jews and Gentiles, the two becoming one new man in Yeshua. When Jews and Christians become one new man in Messiah Jesus, we will experience a move of God such as the world has never seen. Healings, blind eyes opened, diseases removed, miracles, supernatural events, the dead literally raised, multitudes saved the final and greatest revival before the return of Messiah. If we want to experience God's glory right here now on earth, then we need to knock down the wall of division that separates Jew and Gentile. If you want to experience an explosive outpouring of God's Spirit, God's love, God's power, then log on to www.sidroth.org to learn more about the one new man. One spirit, one faith, one new man. 
we now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with David Martin. And David Martin went to Africa and received an anointing that is imperative for the end times. So Enoch, who was part of the Shining Light movement from the 30s, prays for you and what happened? Well, when he prayed for me, he said, I've had some great men and women of God pray for me, well-known uh, leaders. Nothing like that. This was an impartation that literally gave me an awe of God, a, a, a real fear of the Lord, a desire to be right, to walk in right, rightness. I understand we have righteousness, but it was a desire to walk with God closer than I ever could imagine possible. You need a healthy fear and reverence of God. It's almost like it's missing from this generation. But then these Africans have four prophecies. Tell me about them. Well, this revival that started in the 30s spread all over East Central Africa. The revival became known as the Shining One Movement, but really as Enoch explained it to me, it wasn't about shining, it was about holiness. But this revival touched all over, and in the eastern edge of Zaire, a tribal people there, about 400,000 people, very much prophetic. Well, all these people are because they hear God's voice so much better. But on the mountaintop in the mid-60s, four what they called last day prophecies. And those prophecies were there would be a great war in Zaire. Now, what's important is realizing Zaire never had war. Hmm. Very large country, one of the largest, I think, in Africa, never had war. But the prophecies in the 60s, the great war in Zaire, followed by great men of God going to have it in flames. Third prophecy, more war. Fourth prophecy, great revival. Great revival for uh, the Zaire or for the world? I believe personally, having been to that mountaintop, this great revival is for the body of Christ that's going to cover all the earth. David, the glory was so abundant on these people that their lifespan increased. Yes. Explain. Well, the average African lives 60, 70 years of age. These people, on the average, live over 100. And they walked, I mean, these people walked four, five, six days to come to a meeting. Now, tell me about the peace anointing you received. And by the way, when he talks about this, you will experience supernatural peace. Trust me, watch <laughs> this. <laughs> well, the anointing was prophesied to me by God. Uh, nine months after the Enoch anointing, I'm back in Africa again doing a pastor's conference and one of the people that died in the plane crash where a dear friend of mine died she came to me and said, you know, your friend David and my husband are buried in the common grave, but they're not buried, they're planted. I said, what does that mean? She said, well, she, these four prophetic words that were given, which I knew nothing of at this point. She said, in 1997, Zaire went to war, or people in the, in the country, the rebels are called, went to war, and in 1998, Zaire is no longer Zaire. It's overthrown. Now it's called Democratic Republic of the Conca. And she said, your friend, my husband, and 21 others were called in, great leaders were called in to celebrate the victory. As they were landing on the mountaintop where the prophetic word was given that there would be great war in Zaire, which is now fulfilled, as they were landing, the plane crashed and everyone on board went to heaven in flames. That was that prophetic word that they exactly. had. And she said, they're all buried in the common grave. She said, I went there trying to identify my husband. They were working with these people. No one was recognizable. They're all buried in the common grave. But as she was walking around the plane, she said, I was attracted to a window that was knocked out. As, as she held the, the window, she said, it was like electricity going through. And when she said that, God said to me, it's a picture of a prophetic window that God was opening up to pour out His Spirit. And then that night, I woke up with a dream. And in that dream, Sid, I saw a picture of what I believe is Elijah's bones. And of course, they threw a man on those bones, and the man came alive. And I'm sitting up in bed in awe with this dream. And God said to me, 
where those bones are on that common grave, there's a resurrection anointing. And I'm going to send you there to receive it. The next day, I'm all full of questions because I knew nothing about this. And they made opportunity for me to meet with the prophets. And I'm meeting with the prophets. And I'm saying, wow, I've heard about these prophetic words you guys give. I mean, we're talking really cutting edge prophetic words. And God said to me as I was speaking to them, I'm bringing you back here in four months to commemorate those that died. And the UN, I mean, we're talking about war zone. Two weeks after the plane crashed, country went back to war, third prophetic word, in the midst of war, on the mountaintop, it's a military base. And there, God said, he's sending me there to get a resurrection. How is this going to happen, God? But a 12-week UN peace accord, a Lusca peace accord, opened the door for me to go there and receive this resurrection anointing. Okay, tell me about it. How many people were there? Well, they estimated over 35,000 people. And the people are gathered together in a large circle. I'm in the center mound. And when I went there, and what was interesting, the prophets, when this Luska Accord happened, they called me and said, would you come and commemorate the dead? And the same night that they called me, a prophet friend of mine had an out-of-body experience. And in this out-of-body experience, God showed her two entities that were fighting. And she said, God, what is it? And he said to her, spirit and self. And he said, I'm releasing an anointing to cause spirit to overtake self. And I'm sending David there to receive it. That's the day they called me. The next day, as I'm preparing, uh, she gave me that word. But what happened was I went there with great expectation. I don't know what's going to happen. God said resurrection anointing. Now I know from this prophet an anointing to cause spirit to overtake self. I'm thinking when I'm going there, I'm going to go to the grave site. All these people are buried in the common grave. I'm going to receive some, something phenomenal. Get more hair, lose weight, <laughs> look younger, all those things. But none of that happened. And on the third day of meetings amongst 35,000 people, this incredible anointing hits me. God called it resurrection anointing, but the manifestation of it was peace. How would you like to walk in peace no matter what is happening in the world, no matter what is happening to you? I think you can feel, just as David's speaking this, the peace is pouring out to you. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural! God visited a group of Africans with the Shining One anointing. They would literally shine with the glory of God and walked in holiness. They had a peace so powerful it would overcome every negative circumstance. David Martin was transformed by receiving the Shining One anointing, and he wants you to experience it for yourself. Call now and receive David Martin's anointed and easy to understand 10 part audio CD teaching series, Spiritual Preparation for End Times. Yours for a donation of $48. Shipping and handling is included. Through this 10 part audio CD, teaching series, you will learn how to live victoriously in the end times, walk in God's abundance in the midst of hard times, have God's supernatural power and protection operate in your life every day. 30 years of studying the supernatural, God has told me to learn how to do the miraculous so I can teach people how to do the miraculous. When I received a telephone call from David Martin over this phone, he prayed for me to have such a powerful impartation, supernatural peace. I can't wait for you to receive it too. Don't miss out on getting David Martin's anointed and easy to understand 10 part audio CD teaching series, Spiritual Preparation for End Times. Yours for a donation of $48. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 1350. Call or you can write to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918. Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 1350 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with David Martin. And David is on this mountain. He's receiving the peace anointing. This is anointing that will help you overcome everything that could possibly ever come upon you. Uh, David, tell me about that experience. 
Well, the impartation came to me on the third day of meetings. I'm, I'm in the midst of 35,000 people, and the power of God just hits me. And because of some things that were going on that I didn't fully understand, and people were writing things down in the spirit, and I'm, I'm not sure about that, and I'm questioning that, and I'm, I'm crying out to God, because I've been in Africa 19 times, I've seen a lot of voodoo and stuff like that, and I've never seen people write in the spirit. And as they're doing that, I'm questioning it. And I'm crying, saying, oh, God, I'm, I'm concerned about this. And then the anointing hits me. Incredible peace of God. Tears are flowing down my face. But when the anointing hit me, literally, my tears shot out like two squirt guns. And when, when that happened, God said to me, it's me. Receive my peace. And I'm saying, God, I don't understand it. You said resurrection anointing, and he said, that's what this is. And I said, help me understand. And he took me to the story of the Shulamite woman that couldn't have any children. And when this woman uh, had a child supernaturally, child's maybe 12 years of age, has some kind of a farm accident, maybe heat stroke, the father brings the child in. And, and now she's ministering to the child, and the, the child dies, puts him on the prophet's bed, goes out to her husband, and she says, I need, I need to see the man of God. And the husband said, well, how about the boy? And her response is, this is what God showed to me, shalom, peace. And it was that shalom, it was that peace, that prosperity that set the stage for the man of God to come, and the child was raised from the dead. And then God took me to Ephesians 5 where it says, awake thou that sleepest, arise from the dead, and I will cause you to shine. And at that moment, God put all of it together, the, the shining one anointing with the resurrection anointing, and said, I believe this, the church is a sleeping giant, and God is releasing anointing and knowledge of his word to cause us to rise from the dead and shine for his Okay, story. what difference is it making in your life you told me you are hearing God clearer than yes. ever before. Tell me about that. It's, it's a witness in your heart. It's absolutely knowing the voice of God. These prophets would do nothing except what God said. We've gotten so caught up in just following the natural realm. God is saying to me, and this is what he's showing me, that there's a higher level of walking in the realm of the Spirit. And by this anointing, for me, it's been more clearly hearing the voice of God. And, and equally significant, though, is when something bad happens, you're not rattled. The peace of God guards your heart, guards your mind, so that no matter what's going on around you, you're not moved. You told me that your hands are starting to sweat. <laughs> they are. And what that means is that the presence of God is getting stronger and stronger. What difference is it making in your life, these two anointings you've received? Well, very clearly, the impartation that God gave me gives me the ability to more clearly hear God's voice. But over and above that... Isn't that the what Jesus had? He only did yes. what he saw his heavenly Father do. Exactly right, and that's how we're supposed to walk. And I, I believe that's 30 years of my preparation is to do what Jesus did, to walk in that same level of anointing. And that's what I'm seeing. I'm sensing that this anointing has also given me a supernatural peace. That supernatural peace, when something bad happens, like I was in a head-on car correct, uh, accident a couple years ago, should have been killed, I mean, but God gave me this supernatural peace. But and one example I just thought of is, I was in LA, coming, flying back from LA to Tulsa, and American Airlines canceled my flight. And instead of getting home now at noon, a direct flight, I'm going to be in the air for the next, or in the airports for the next seven or eight hours to get home late at night. But anyway, because of this peace guarding my heart, I said, okay, all things work together for good. I don't understand it, not what I'm planning, but God supernaturally orchestrated for me to sit next to a businessman, heard about what we were doing, and the next day wires $25,000 to our ministry. Now, I believe that without the peace, I could have missed that 
because I'm walking in anger with American Airlines or frustration or fear, whatever. It's got to even affect your health, just as the Africans lived into their hundreds. I mean, yeah. when you're walking, uh, uh, let's face it, most doctors say stress is the cause of most problems, physical problems people have. You can't walk in stress if you want to when you're in this piece. Well, you know, it's always a choice. But, but an interesting point to this is what you said about stress. Well, the parable of the